Alrighty, I want to show how I do the silver finish like I have on these bracers here using graphite powder, rub and buff, and a silver powdered wax. So this bracer is already done. I've got this one here that I just finished up. I might put a little more rub and buff on it yet. But this top part's not finished because it has a housing to actually fit my cell phone so that I can run uh, graphics on here to show bounties and things like that. I can also run some chatter off of this. So I'm going to finish this top plate right now. I'm going to do it separately. So what I use is uh, graphite powder that I got on Amazon. There's gold leaf and metallic powder by Newberg something here. It's hard to read the label, but I'll, I'll get a link to this. It's, a, it's not essential, but it helps because it's a, it's a finely ground wax powder and it helps the graphite bind to the primer. And then I'm gonna use Rub and Buff, which you can get at most craft stores. And we started off with a light gray primer that's been sanded smooth. The Rust-Oleum Filler Primer is what I use typically. This is a 3D printed part. And to start off, we're gonna use some graphite powder mixed with a tiny little bit of that silver powder and a soft brush. So we're going to just cover over the whole surface with that mix. Now you're going to want, since this is a dust or powder, you're going to want to wear a face mask and have ventilation. I'm not because I'm talking, so um, you can see I've got powder all over the place too, so old clothes is a plus. All right, I'm sort of uh, circular motion buffing it in a little bit. You can see right now it looks like maybe sandblasted iron is the color that you'd get. And there might be applications where that's all you, you want. So then grabbing a paper towel and just wadding it up here. You need to use a good amount of pressure when you buff it. You're going to just start, start buffing it. You want to make sure the part that you're buffing is strong enough to handle the amount of pressure you need too. So reinforce everything. And the first step here is just to, to buff it all smooth. It'll, it'll have a nice sheen to it. And basically just laying an undercoat for that uh, rub and muff to go on. Your arms will get tired after doing this for a while, but it looks so awesome when it's all done. The photos don't really capture the luster you're gonna get. You get a lot of depth with this. It's so much better than just raw silver spray paint. That just looks like silver spray paint. Okay, so see now it looks a little more, a little more polished. Now I'm gonna use actual just straight graphite powder and go over it again, pressing a little harder in a circular motion. The graphite powder is a little darker, but a little more steely. And again, buffing. Now, if this was for a blaster, I would probably just use the graphite powder and maybe a little of that silver powder. It looks like uh, gunmetal. Try to show you there. It's like I said, it's sort of hard to show up on film. There you go. Next, we're gonna take some rub and buff. So it's a silver leaf rub and buff, 
put a little bit on a piece of cardboard or a pallet of some sort. You can see how dusty your hands get. Paper towel, again, wad it up a little bit. You want a nice smooth edge if you can. A little bit of rub and buff now. You want to apply this quickly. You don't want to do this in sections. You want to try to do areas that the light would reflect off of naturally. You don't want to put a stripe and then put another stripe down because it's going to be noticeable. So sort of dab it a little bit. Try to keep it looking a little less man-made. Little circular motions work really well. And again, anywhere where the metal is going to get polished naturally is where you would apply rub and buff. And this is a pretty flat surface, so we're, we're going pretty much over the whole thing. Okay. And you want to let it dry a little bit. If you start buffing it right now, it's not really going to work the way it is best. You will get a sheen, but it's not the same kind of sheen. It's not as burnished. Now you notice I just dipped a little bit in the gun, powder, gun metal, the graphite powder that I have here. That helps smooth it out a little bit too. You get more of a steely color. The key is pressure. You need to put enough pressure on this to actually get it to polish. And again, you have to be careful that the part is strong enough to handle the amount of polishing or the pressure needed. So I'm gonna lay it down. If I have a little powder of the graphite on here, it's not a problem. And then start buffing it. Really press as hard as I can. You have to be careful sometimes that you're not taking the base color paint off also. So there's a little bit of a balancing act there. This is a tricky part because it's raised right here. So I'm gonna sort of hang it off the edge. Apologies if my head gets in the way. You'll feel this will warm up. So if you're doing this on Sintra, like I said, this is a 3D printed part printed on in uh, ABS plastic. But in Sintra, you're actually going to be warming the surface of the Sintra enough that it's more susceptible to dents, dings, and scratches. So you want to be careful with that. Be mindful. Dents, dings, and scratches are going to happen no matter what, though. So don't cry over it. It's going to happen while you're trooping, so... Okay, so it's not going to show up super great on the pick camera, but you can see the silver that I'm able to get with this technique. There's a few spots on this bracer that I want to go over with a little bit more rub and buff.
The shine's only going to be good as your surface too. So if your surface is rough and not sanded smooth, it's going to be rough and not sanded smooth. This isn't going to suddenly make something porous and rough look like polished metal. Take the time to sand it. Wet sanding works really well to get a nice sheen on things. Wet sanding with really fine sandpaper, just take your time. Put some music on and go to town because it's going to be a while. This is something that can be reapplied to this armor over time if it starts to get a little dull. Go ahead and buff it every once in a while. Alright, pretty happy with that. And then this part will pop on here. It's screwed into position. There's a little spot there that's more visible than I thought it was going to be, so I'm going to add a little rub and buff to it and polish it off. That's it. Ooh, a little bit on the side there too. Let it dry pretty good and come back and buff it again a couple hours later. This is one that was done earlier this morning, but I'm going to go ahead and give this another once over also. I still have some buttons I'm going to add here. I think they're going to be blue. And I have a panel on this one that I think I'm going to add a few buttons. There's a center bar that goes across on the inside here over my phone, and then the graphics is split up. And I've got a hole built in here so that I can actually run a power cord to a battery pack that will go up in my backpack or backplate or wherever I can put it. Um, I used, these parts were 3D printed here and uh, cast, well these are rigid here and here and then this was cast in a flexible plastic with uh, nylon webbing embedded inside and then Velcro. And then for the hinge, I used contact cement and leather. So there's a leather hinge on the inside, just contacted cement into place and then some foam rubber to help it fit my arm better. And that's it, those are the basics. These are actual aluminum tubes cut to fit inside this 3D printed part that I made. So otherwise it's all made out of Sintra. Few 3D printed parts right here, right here, right here, this, this, but everything else was scratch built. So that's what we got. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.